Hey friends, it's Dr. Mary Gardner with Lap of Love Veterinary Hospice. And I typically do these Facebook Lives and videos on medical issues. And I decided to take a little bit of a different approach and do something kind of fun to talk about different ways that you can create uh, memorial items for your pets. And, you know, to be honest, I probably have a hundred ideas and there's so many out there on, on Etsy and on, on, uh, on just on the internet. But I wanted to touch base on a couple of the, the most common things that we do. Um, and also afterwards, bring on a special guest to talk about some things that she does that I absolutely love. So I wanted to really focus first on our paw impressions. At Lap of Love, for every family that we help, we always do a paw impression um, after, after, the, after we say goodbye. And I have to tell you, the paw impression is probably one of the most important things that we as, as veterinarians do because it's the last you know, physical memento that you, know, that, that you may have, and it's not easy. So if some of you have tried to get a paw impression for your, from your pet, they may not like it, especially if they're sensitive on their feet or their toes. If you've ever had to clip their nails and they want nothing to do with it, it can be a challenge. Um, so that is why I, I personally like to do the paw impressions after they've passed. And, you know, to be honest, I'd love to also hand something to you as a family afterwards so that brings a little smile back to your faces. But I want to talk about some of the tips and tricks I've had over the years. So there is a lot of different clay material out there available. Either they're um, air dry or they're bakeable. And we at Lap of Love use a Crayola air, air dry uh, material. So it's very soft. It's very easy to use. And, uh, and then you just let it sit for a week about, and then it, it air dries. There are the, the, the baking type, uh, which you then have to bake. Um, and some of the differences is, are that the air dry it kind of ends up like a styrofoam and I've got some examples. So this is a, this is a, um, that air dry and it's, you can, you can bang it on your head and it's not going to break where the, the baked ones, this is hard. And if you drop it, it's, it's broken. So I always careful with my clay, my baked ones, uh, versus my air dry ones. So I really like the air dry for, for making it easy. So if you do plan on trying to get a palm impression of your pet before they pass, maybe look into the air dry clay because it's a lot softer and easier to press their paw and they may not be as aggravated as much. There are also other products out there. It's, um, uh, I don't know how to really describe it really well. It's kind of like a styrofoam and you push their pet, your, the pet's paw into it. So there's a lot of products available, but I want to show you some of the paw impressions. So this, my girl, Sam, some of you may have known, um, Oh, somebody says my, my video is out of focus. I, I see it okay. So let me know. My girl, Sam, I let go on Valentine's Day. And so I did a palm impression of her. And so this of hers. So now I'm going to, the glare is bad, but I'm going to try to get it. So there's my little palm impression. So a thing to keep in mind when you're doing these is to is that you do have to use a bit of pressure when you're, when you're making these palm impressions. So I usually like to personally do the, the middle pad first of the pet and then each and every uh, toe afterwards. And it's one time, so you gotta push it because if you try to lift it up and see how you did and if it didn't work well, you push it down again, it's just not gonna be good. Um, the other thing to consider um, is if, uh, if you want to put their, their, their toenails or claws in it as well. This is a hot debate, I hate to tell you. So I have had many, many families, many, veterinary clinics, many crematories argue about whether or not to put the claw in the paw. So <laughs> um, I personally like to do it. I usually, uh, if they're very long nails, I will clip the nails so that way it doesn't like kind of scoop out the clay when you're removing their, um, oh, by the way, please tell me where you're calling from or, or listening from. Uh, so I see Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. So um, anyway, back to the, back to the claws. Uh, your paw print will look very different if you don't do the, the, the claws or not. So if you ever get a palm impression back uh, from, let's say, a crematory and they didn't do the, the claws, you might think this is not my pet's paw because it looks so different. But um, I like it. Sometimes they can look a little bit like a raccoon with the claws on it. But I do, I do personally, just me, hello, Seattle, like the, like the claws in it. So um, 
What I also love to do is an ink impression. And this is my girl, Sam, her ink impression. These are really hard as well. So um, it, again, you have to put more pressure than you think. Uh, and, and you will have an ink pad and my special guests will show us a little bit more maybe. So you have a little ink pad and you just load up the paw as much as best as you can. What you also want to do is make sure that you, um, hello, Salem, Oregon and Florida, Michigan is clip, um, any extra fur so that this, sometimes they can have a uh, fur between their little pads and it could get, it could get, um, into the ink or even into the, 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 the clay a bit too much. So maybe if you want to shave a little bit, this is why I sometimes like to do it better after they have passed. But I love an ink impression. And what a lot of people do then is you can scan this. You can get a lot of products made. Um, I even know people who have had tattoos made from their paw impressions. So if any of you have a cool way that you've used your paw impressions, please post in, in some pictures and things like that. Hello, Los Angeles and Nevada. Now, my oh, back to the ink. So one tip is that a lot of times our pets pads are very dry. So if you take a damp paper towel, so just a, a moist paper towel and moisten, not wet, but just moisten their pads a little bit before you put it on the ink, it'll really suck up ink well and then make a really good uh, um, print. Now, here's my special trick that I do. So what I do is I ink the, I gotta make sure I'm doing this right. I ink the paw and then I make with an inked paw a clay impression. So here's my impression and it's got the ink in the clay. So this is my little special, I should trademark this. <laughs> my little special thing that I do is that I, I put the ink inside. So I, um, I talked to you about that there's these ink pads that you can get at like Michael's or any craft store. They also have different colors. So if you don't want black, you can have red or pink or purple or whatever. I found one that had a rainbow uh, pad. And so then I did for my boy Duncan, my Doberman, I made a rainbow paw impression and I, I didn't get his little nails. That's okay. And then, uh, but then I did what I just showed you there. Let's see if I can show that. And then I did a paw impression with the rainbow ink. So a lot of different things that you could do. Now, besides, um, oh, Roxanne's getting a tattoo of Smokey. Uh, <laughs> okay. So another thing that, that we can do is take an impression of the pet's nose. So the nose is actually said to be more like a thumbprint, very unique to a pet. And I like to do a nose impression as well. So if I'm ever helping a family and they've made a special comment about the nose, like I'm gonna miss his nose prints on the window or something like that, I'll make a mental note of that and do that nose print afterwards. Um, so here's my girl, Sam. So here's the ink print of her nose. Let me see if that looks kind of good. And it's great, it gets all the little nubbies in there. And then just like my paw impressions, I made an ink impression in clay so an ink and clay together of her nose. And I just really, really love that the nose prints. Again, you can make this into jewelry, into prints and things like that. Um, I will tell you that sometimes, like, like with the paw, you have to put a lot of pressure and you have to do that with the nose prints too. And because the nose, our noses are quite wobbly, um, you have to push really hard and, and, um, and, it, and, and some people, you may not like that, but, I did it to my own girl, Sam, after she passed because I really loved her nose and I will miss kissing her nose. So I did that. Um, so I love the, 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 the paw impressions. And then at the crematory, so I also own a crematory and we have a special engraving machine where we take these, we take these um, prints and we scan them in and we clean them up for all the little extra fur and things like that and, and, and the nails. And then we engrave it on the top of the uh, of the box. So this is a special engraving machine. So there's a lot of products out there that you can find. Um, and then uh, also we do we do. Uh, oh, somebody says she likes my rainbow my rainbow uh, ink. So at every um, passing with lap of love, we also take a little fur clipping. And uh, so so this is my girl Sam and all her pretty fur. So. You know, try to think about if you want to get a fur clipping, where where you might want to get that. I personally love behind the ear. It's always the softest fur um, or any special coloring. So if you are going to get um, uh, some fur back from your veterinarian or your uh, crematory and you want a specific color, 
or, or place, certainly let them know because that way we can make sure we can honor that. And especially those multicolored kitty cats and things like that, you want to get from all the, the, the um, best places. So somebody just asked, do you do the nose prints while the pet is still living? So you can, they don't love it. I'm not going to lie. So it is, you do have to push hard and, and it could be scary to some of them. Um, you certainly can. So try to look at a very soft clay. So the air dry clays are really soft. Um, so that way it's, that way it's quick. Um, so it's, it's, you know, they could get kind of nerve. I wouldn't want it, somebody to imprint my nose right now, but I would do my hand. Um, so that is just some of the things I want to show you before. Now I'm going to bring on my, um, oh, somebody she had crinkled hair behind her ear and that's the exact fur she wanted. I'm, I love the ear fur. So now I'm going to bring on my special guest without further ado, because she's got some other, other things. And, you know, over time I'll, I'll add on other, um, videos to talk about different ways that you can memorialize your pet. But my friend, Mandy Pratt, I met her when I was living in Southern California. So hello to all my SoCal friends. And because I needed a, a photographer to take some pictures, professional pictures of me and my girl, uh, my Samoyed, and uh, I found her. And miraculously, because she is an amazing photographer, but she also does other really amazing things with some uh, with, with your pet's pictures and things like that. So, um, so Renee says, it's much kinder to wait until they've passed. I agree with you on the nose print. I would wait. Um, now, without further ado, I'm going to bring on my friend, Mandy Pratt. Do, 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 do. Um, hello, there you are. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yay. So Mandy, you are in Southern California. I miss you very much. I miss all my California friends. And thank you for coming on here. Thank you for having me. So I just have to show off some of your photography because I think I was looking up for a, a pet photographer and I always, I always suggest any of my hospice clients to go get it, to go get photography done because you, you just, you took the most amazing pictures for me and I will always remember them and cherish them. So this is my girl, she was Samoyed and everyone's like, oh, she looks like she's a puppy. She was 14 in this picture. So she was really old. And I told Mandy, so Samoyeds have a, um, they do a roux. So there's something called a roux and it's a special kind of uh, sound that they make. It's, oh. anyway, so Isaac, Mandy, there's one picture I want and I want it of her rooing. And she got me the best roux picture ever. And then also she, there's like, I've got a whole book of wonderful pictures that you've taken. I, like, it's incredible. I can't even get them all in there, but one of the pictures was so good that I actually used it for a textbook that me and Danny and other veterinarians created. So you're awesome. And I just needed to give you that shout out, but you are more than just a great photographer. Thank you. You're so nice. <laughs> what kind of tips can you give it? I talked a little bit about paw and nose impressions already, but can you give me some other tips that you may have? Yeah, for sure. So, um, just to explain a little bit. So I started out with the uh, pet photography and then I was having clients tell me like, man, I wish I would have done this like for my pet, you know, that's past. Can you do anything with a picture of them that I have like on my phone, you know? And for so long I was, I felt so bad because I was like, no, I can't, you know, I'm so sorry. But my grandmother is an artist and she was like, why don't you come, come out here to Arizona, play with my printing press, you know, and we'll see what we can get together. So um, that was in 2015. So ever since then, I've been creating these um, etchings. Sometimes I'll just do, you know, let's see, without this stuff, just the picture. Yes, so I people will that. send me like um, a couple phone shots. Yeah, there's one too. Uh huh. And uh, they're actually etched photos. So it's not a drawing, it's an etching. Um, but what does, that then, what does that mean, an etching? Right. So, um, it means that there's a whole process with these. Um, actually, I'm gonna just grab, there's an etched plate sitting right yes. next to me. I'm Go gonna grab it. that, because it'll my help. Videos, my videos, are, there's no rules. We do whatever. Oh, what is this? It'll help make sense. So what happens is people send me like a couple of photos and then I'll tell them which one is gonna make like the best, you know, etching. And everybody gets all, you know, worried about what, what kind of photo, like, what should it look like? And I'm just like, just 
send me like five to 10 and then I'll tell you which one is the best as long as they're in focus and stuff like that. And sometimes I will like Photoshop some of the stuff in the background, like a crooked windowsill or, you know, stuff like that. And then I take the image and then I print it to a transparency. And then this is a light sensitive plate. So I put the transparency over the plate and then I expose it. And then um, I wash off the top part and then it leaves these like etched grooves in the plate. And then I have to ink the plate and then wipe off the excess. And then it gets paired on my grandmother's printing press with a piece of um, Italian cotton paper. And then I literally like crank the press through. I do Facebook lives every every Friday to show how they're made because people are always like, what, like, what is that? How do you make those? Um, so it comes out pressed, kind of like um, the whole letter press idea. So that's what this is. And let me see if you can see, there's like an impression in the paper there. It's hard to see from this angle, but um, that's what they are. So you feel it? I feel it. Yeah. So cool. So, it's just a way to like, um, you know, take a photograph and put some like depth into it and then, you know, just make it into fine art. So um, people seem to really like them um, as gifts or just for themselves. But then I started playing around with my own because I thought, yeah, there's a kitty one. These are our cat lovers. So we yes. are not species Yes, we exactly. Okay. So I started playing with, um, with, a couple different things. One was adding in um, a little bit of ash because I'm mixing up the ink anyway. And so I made, yeah, I made one of my kitty cat um, and just added like a little bit of his ash. So that way I knew like, it not only was just this, you know, his etched portrait, but it was actually like him a little bit. So that was cool. And then I was like, okay, what if, like, what if when Jack passed, who you so graciously helped me with, thank you. Um, when he passed, you know, I had the the um, mold that you that you made and everything. And yeah. That was, my, that was my paw print. Did I do okay? Yes, you did great. And you gave me a little bit of his fur. Did. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so I took a little bit of his fur and tied it with a thread and then his paw print. And then um, this is a little wax seal that I put like a little bit more of the ash into. Mm. So that way, cause I wanted like one piece to hang on the wall that was like a collage of everything, you know? I like so. this idea. So if I, so if I uh, send you a picture of Sam, pictures yes. of Sam. Yes. <laughs> And then would I send you maybe an ink or 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 can you take a, a picture of this? So, okay. So I wrote a whole blog post about these because um, it's better if you have, yeah, it's better if you have the um, actual print, what you just showed me like this, you know? Yes. But if you, yeah, but if you don't, then I figured out how to make like a stamp from this. Mm -hmm. So on my blog, it talks all about that and it gives the different products because I okay, tried we'll, a few. We'll post, that. we'll post your blog link yeah. here so everybody's got yeah. it. Um, and I just wrote a new one this morning just for you guys. So there's links to all the different, you know, oh. posts where I show the products and stuff. But um, yeah, so I just experimented with this and then I ended up creating this and that's, how I could um, press, you know, like a stamp and then get this. So that way I could use stamp this as many times I wanted, you know, to make multiple pieces of art or whatever. So um, that was cool. And then Mary, what you were saying too, with my pets that I have now, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, now that they're still with me, like I want to do everything I can, right? To like keep them with me. So I found these, they're, they're like mess free ink pads. Yeah. yeah. So that way um, you put, you have to make sure you have the right side. <laughs> um, and then you put their paw on top and there's a piece of paper underneath. And then you just press. And like you said, you kind of have to press hard. Yeah. And then um, you lift it up and then you get the print like you were showing like this. Nice. And there's no mess because there's, it's like ink side down. So it's cool. Uh, okay. I yeah. got it. That is so cool. 
So, all right. So then, so I could, so on your blog, it talks about how to make that um, stamp, if you will. And then we mm -hmm. could, and then I would send you the stamp maybe and a little bit of art. What you would do is if you made the stamp and then you would um, just ink, you put some ink on it and um, then you stamp it and then you send me this. Nice. Okay. So then I would send you that little bit yep. of ashes if I wanted to and yeah. uh, maybe some fur also. And then right. I nice. And I have this little kit for those people who want to do the ashes. Yeah. Um, and I send them this because people are like, wait, what do I do? <laughs> right? Like how much do I send you and all? So I give them um, instructions here. There you go. And then um, in here is the tiny little, check this out. This is so tiny. This tiny okay. little scoop. And that way they know like how much to put in there. And then there's a little Ziploc baggie. Okay. And then they just mail this back to me. So not much because, you know, a lot of people are surprised how little ashes some little guys could get. So um, and because I own a crematory, like I see it now happening. And, and so let's say you have a five pound kitty cat. It's mm -hmm. what we get back is is bone. And I'll do a whole Facebook live on, on cremation maybe one day. Mm -hmm. What we get back is the remnants of the of the bone ground up into ashes. And bone mass is kind of small on some of these guys. Even if you have a, a fat cat, you know, it's it's just their bones. And their and and my bones may be more dense than somebody else's of the same weight. And so you're not, you are not gonna get if you have a 50 pound lab and another 50 pound lab. You might get different amounts back. So don't be nervous about that if you ever have that. But sometimes these little guys, these kitty cats, we don't get much back. And so that small scoop is, I could I could give that up. Yeah, this is tiny. And, and so kind of my ashes. I have a question for you. A lot of people ask me is, um, you know, can you ask your crematorium to package these up for you so you don't have to like, you know, it's hard enough to lose a pet and then to open that up and like have to deal with the ashes. So, yeah. so fantastic question. So um, almost all crematories will put their ashes in some kind of uh, uh, urn, obviously. Right. And so most will have like a little lock, you know, it's kind of like a trunk, if you will. Um, so, so but it's one of those like super easy locks to open. Right. And so that but ours has this uh, it's hard to get has a screw and then it like the little slides out. But all of the ashes are always kept inside a bag. So whatever urn they're in, they're in a bag. A lot of people ask that. They're worried they're going to open it and like ashes yeah. are going to come out. So it's all in a bag. But sometimes they're vacuum sealed. Um, and so this is a great point. At, at Monarch, our, our crematory, we it's just like tied. So you can untie it, scoop some out, tie it up again. But but Sarissa, my girl that you took pictures of, her ashes are, are vacuum packed. And I don't want to open that, right? So great point you could ask the crematory ask your veterinarian to put a note so that way they could put it in a separate little baggie um because your products jewelry so resin products there's so many great stuff out there diamonds everything we can make from ashes um and uh so that way you don't have to open them and disturb your urn if because it is sense some people are a little bit you know i don't even want to call sensitive they don't want to open it right yeah. so so um that's a great that's a great point so that a hundred percent your crematory can can help you with that and you that's know good, good after the fact have a friend or something like that but the ones that get vacuum sealed is is the ones that are even more important to try to ask there's many things you can ask of your of your crematory so don't that's be cool shy. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah that's cool nice okay so um how long does it take you to do these etchings right so um I do them every Friday unless somebody needs one sooner than that. But um, yeah. I do these live on Facebook and Instagram. So people, it's fun for people to be able to like see their art be made. Oh, so, wait a minute. So <laughs> you might even pick mine to be shown on your Facebook live. Yes, exactly. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, um, it, it takes, um, it takes a while to make them. Um, so I usually like prep them before I go live when I'm making them and stuff. So it takes a couple hours and then, um, the actual paper, um, and the artwork has to dry overnight. So that way I can sign it the next day. Like see down here is it's signed and numbered and stuff like that. So it takes, you know, a couple days and then, um, 
I package it up all pretty with ribbon and all that kind of stuff. So nice. yeah, you do you do a phenomenal job. I've got other things from you too that 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 I I I got from you. The members. Oh, Sarissa. My yeah. little switches. So I got these, and they're like. I don't know what you call these, but they're mounted prints. Yeah. Mounted prints. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I'm very good at photography or, or arts and crafts. So this is so cool. And um, so, and do you have like options to pick sizes? I like that size, what you had there, because it's not too big. It still has, so, you know, what's that? This goes, um, everything that I make, I always um, package it up in a double mat. Okay. And um, they, they all come in like standard sizes. So this is an 11 by 14. So you just, um, you can go purchase an 11 by 14 frame from Michael's or wherever you want. And then you just pop it right in there. So it's, it's easy. Nice. Yeah. Okay, good. And then, I guess I should say the most, uh, the most popular etching is um, this one by itself. And it comes in at eight by 10 mat. And yes, like that, exactly. Uh-huh, yeah. Yes, here's Leo. I like our kitty cat again. Yeah, kitty cat. Right. I yeah. Love this. And well, now hold on. Now that I'm looking at Leo a little bit up close, let's see if everybody can see what I see. Yes. <laughs> Leo's got green eyes like me. Why, right. why did you do that? So, with um, some of the etchings, they just some of them just for to me, they just call out for color. Like um, if you if people happen to go to my blog and they'll see the blog post before the recent one, yeah. I colored this dog's sweater because um, it was red and it just it helps um, the image kind of pop a little bit more. And, um, you know, people can request if they want color or sometimes I'll suggest it like, hey, this would look like even more amazing, like if the red sweater was colored. So are you good with me doing that, you know, and. So it's just like a fun way to add a little bit of extra oomph to it, I guess. I I love it. Uh, Joanne has her. She had a cat named Gray Boy. Her spelling. Oh no Gray way! Boy. Oh my gosh! That's what yeah. I named my company after my kitty cat, whose nickname was Gray Boy. Look at that. Okay, so look at I'm doing a horrible job putting my little things out here. So I'm supposed to show that. I'm oh. sorry, Joanne. I I always <laughs> forget to do this. And then, also, Gray Boy Print, Gray Boy Pet Portraits. dot com. That's a little. Yes. So I love it. And now, so Joanne spells it with an A, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Here's a great one. You have a, a the nose. Little somebody has a picture of that. Right. Uh, so um. Yeah, and I could feel it. Sorry, now I'm getting all into the feeling. Now I want people to ask some questions that I have. Nancy says her beloved boy recently passed. I wish and. Um, she wished she thought of all these memorial ideas. She did clip a little fur. What else can she do with, with that? Right. Ideas with that. Yeah. So I just wrote um, the blog post that I just published this morning. I gave some other options in there too. There's a couple other um, artists that I like. So um, there's one in there for you, Nancy, who takes um, fur and does special like jewelry and different things like that. So if you go to that blog post, um, you can click on her link there and um, check it out. So hopefully that's helpful. But she has yeah. all kinds of different options. That's so cool. I, you know, I'm sitting here with COVID bored out of my mind. So I started to do resin, which I'm horrible at. I, you know, I, it's not easy. But before Sam passed, I actually clipped some fur from Sam as my test and I put it in, in, in some resin, which was cool. But I would suggest finding somebody who knows really how to do it because my resin products, like here's my paper cup which is like, or my pencil cup, way too small. So my, my resin is not so good, but there's a lot of different things you could do to, to kind of keep it. And I know for me, for a little while, I like to smell their fur. I know, call me weird, but I'm sitting oh. here. Yeah. Because I miss it. So I like yes. to say, I probably take more than I, more than I should, but okay. Awesome. You have some, some other ideas on your blog. Thank you. Yes. Um, so let's see if there was anything else that I missed. Nancy would like my crematory lecture. I don't do that. I thought of that. Why, why not? So we had a pendant urn made. There's also, right, there's little pendants that are, that can hold ashes and fur. This isn't one of them. This was a, this was actually when I graduated vet school. This is Sarissa's paw print. Everyone's like, oh, is that like a ferret or a rat? 
No, the artist shrunk it down and it's a it's an impression. There's a lot of jewelry that could be etched and then there's an, like it's an impression. She must have did the reverse stamp as well. Um, but there's the little lockets and things like that. I'll admit it's very hard for me to get the, the, the ashes in those lockets. Those the holes are like super small. So you need like a special Alice in Wonderland funnel funnel to like get it in the, <laughs> into the tiny little bits. But uh, so it's um so there's a lot of different things you could okay. Definitely uh, get more pet fur than you think because you might need it for a project. I, I would I would agree. Um, so Linda had a yellowish diamond made from Jerry at, at lifegem.com. So you could use fur ash, right? They make carbon, like they take the carbon out of it. That's oh. just so awesome. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to think if there's, so I, I, I'm gonna show you guys something. Please don't think I'm a little bit, uh, you know, odd, but we do get a lot of times and uh, people asking for, for things like teeth. And I wanted to talk about teeth. And it is, um, what you see is like a third of what's there. So teeth roots go really far up into the bones. It, just like if you were to ever get a tooth extracted, it, it takes a lot. You can't just go and come out. So we do have a number of families that ask if, if they could get a tooth back. And um, sometimes these little incisors, these little wiggly ones, we can easily kind of help them get, but the, the canines are really hard and it takes usually special equipment. So if that is something that you want, I would definitely talk to your regular veterinarian. And even if Lap of Love helps you, we can help, you know, you can then bring your pet to your regular veterinarian to, to take out the tooth. Um, because we do aquamation here in South Florida and there's other aquamation uh, uh, options available, the we actually can save many of the teeth. And so when Sam was cremated, I noticed that there was teeth left. So I actually asked my, you know, my, my friends at the crematory to, to save me some teeth. So I'm gonna show you one of her teeth. This might be a little bit shocking to some, but look at how big. So that was, this is what you see. And that's all what's like, you know, it's a little fragile, right? So they're not, you have to be careful with these things. So, um, so I asked them to save me one or two teeth. They actually saved all the teeth for me. So I have a jar full of her teeth. <laughs> wow. So. Oh, wow. I don't know what I will do with them, but I could turn them into diamonds as well. But I yeah. just, I wanted to bring it up because sometimes people are maybe not want to ask about these things, but trust me, we have been asked from, from, from taxidermy to teeth to, you know, I have shaved a whole dog once because they wanted to make a sweater out of it. So um, there was just a part of me that's like, well, I can never get those teeth back. So can I have a tooth? And when you're in, when you're in a moment of grief, maybe you ask for things that you're like, now what am I going to do with this? <laughs> right. That's okay. So I just wanted to put it out there. Uh, let me just see if we've got any other questions. Uh, you're not weird. Thank you, Nancy. She smells, <laughs> she smells her dog too. Um, yeah, so always take really good pictures. Uh, I, I really do love to take the senior hospice photography. There was somebody up earlier that's from Houston. She's a photographer and she does uh, hospice sessions like picture but, and because they're just the best looking when they're skinny and scrawny and wobbly. And um, so Kathy found a piece of Tippy's fur in a pocket on the way home after her passing and uh uh, on the, uh, made me feel like she was still with me. Do you know if anyone has DNA tested from the fur? I always regretted not doing a DNA to see what breed she was. This is a great one, Kathy, because there are, um, there's like the 23andMe basically version of, of pet DNA testing for the breeds. And um, I was always like mm, a little skeptical about these things, but I just did it for my dog uh, who's, who's like a hound mix. And I was like, if they come back with like half Chihuahua, half Rottweiler, then I know this is not right. And they and they literally came back with like what I could totally see him being. Um, I think if, I think I did wisdom panel. So I would, um, but I don't think they could. I don't think they could do that off of the fur. I think it because it's a it was a swab. So things to think about beforehand. Uh, so Carrie asked, do you mean to keep the fur in a syringe? I could honestly see that being very cute, like a. Sh a sh a shot of fluffy maybe carry on with you on anything you want to do uh can i paint or write on my cat's paw print oh this is a great one so linda asks can she write on it so afterwards uh 
you can. So sometimes people will put stamps in, in the clay and, and I don't mind that as a veterinarian, like sometimes I get a little a, a stage fright to do that. Cause then I'm like, I got to make sure I spell it right. And it could be backwards. The E could be backwards and the stamp. And sometimes the stamp will have a little square around it. It takes artistry to do these things. So, uh, but you can, after it's dry, you can write on it and get somebody with really nice, you know, handwriting to do it. At our crematory, we engrave that beautiful engraving machine engraves the names on it because none of us have good handwriting to write it on there, but you absolutely can. You can just get a Sharpie and write it on there. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if I had one to show you, because I wrote, I wrote my pet's name on the back of some of these, because I can't remember who they are. <laughs> so funny. Um, so let's see how difficult are teeth from, uh, to remove from an aquamation. Carrie, they're, they're, they're there afterwards. So you just pick them out of the, the pile of, because what's left is bone and, and, and teeth. I'll, put, I'll talk all about that in my, in my other one. Um, Dr. Mary, can I say something really quick about um, the pet photography? So I always tell people like it's so, so important to make sure that you get good photos, whether you do them yourself or you have a professional do it. Um, and on my website, um, on the very top navigation bar, there's um, it says photographers right there. And if you click on there, there's two things. One, there is a link to go find different professional pet photographers all around the nation. And so they can find one by them. Um, I'm in Southern California, but you know, if you're li living in Maryland, then you can go find one that's closer to you that way. And then I also do work with pet photographers who, um, like I do etchings for them as well, for their yeah. clients. So um, that's all on the website. So yeah. I like, I'm so glad I did, I, I did my session with you and, cool. uh, you know, Sam has been in, I've been in a couple of newspapers, so she's been on, she's been on the New York times. That girl, she didn't need her own special. <laughs> That's session. awesome. She's like, <laughs> up. Um, so Rick asks, can the etchings be made waterproof because maybe adding to a wind chime or something? I oh. don't have the capability to do that, but if you go onto that, blog post that I wrote this morning on grayboypetportraits.com and click on the blog. Um, you can ask the other gal, um, Comfort Connects, I think it is. And you can ask her because um, I'm not sure if she does that, but she might know somebody who does. Um, what because about she, What about the plate that you make? The plate, yes. So um, unfortunately, I don't have, I didn't think to bring in an inked one to show you guys because once it has ink on it you can actually see their face a little bit better a little bit it's a dog yeah, a little it's bit a yeah dog. so um actually i have one right next to me hang on just a second we were playing we were playing with the idea of offering the actual etched plates oh that and i had cute. I had my framer um just frame it just for kicks it's a float frame type of thing i don't know really? if you can tell yeah. Um, but I was going to show this to her. That's so that so is, cool. that is so, an example of an ink. And it equals plate. dry, obviously, right? So that way it doesn't yes, smudge. It's okay. dry. But normally, you know, the regular, what I'm doing is I'm yeah. etching the plate and then I ink it and I put it on the printing press and then I put the paper on top and it gets cranked together. And that's what leaves that impression here that you feel. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Kind of like letterpress, that kind of idea. Yeah, it's super cool, guys. I wish you yeah. all feel it. I know feeling. it's like it's hard. You you gotta like feel it to you really, really get this. To appreciate it. I yeah. love it. Okay, so Kristen says her Virginia Beach lap of love vet was amazing. Um, oh, that's awesome. We have two out there, so I don't know who was yours. As sad as it was, she always loved work, working with her in the pet loss center, which is her crematory out there. So yeah, they're great. Uh, Carrie, I've also seen other vets tape with clear packing tape markings on a pet to shave under the tape to lift the whole marking away. Oh, I get it. So if they have a special, put like the, the not shipping tape, but kind of like the packing tape. And then when you clip underneath it, that's something else to, to, to think about, guys, because a lot of times we'll, we'll clip kind of, I don't want to say longer fur, but we'll clip. But if you go deep into the fur and like really shave close to the skin, it's almost darker there. It's like the roots. Yeah. Or, or a different texture. And so some people will, will be concerned that that's not their pet if the crematory goes like deeper than I may cut at, a, at an appointment. So 
Um, but that's cool to then have it all in one place. Mm -hmm. So Nancy loves this idea. Um, Pam had a couple of pillows made from photos. I love it. Uh, I miss doing paw and ink. Uh, so Kristen loves doing all those uh, paw impressions. And then Kathy had a paw, a photo made of my pet's paw taken in the snow and uh, on an asphalt driveway. It's pretty clear. Do you think an engraving or etching could be made from that? Yes. In fact, that's one of the options that I put on the blog post. If you, if your pet is still with you, you can either do the mess free ink pad, you know, to get the actual um, print like we were showing, or um, you can actually take a picture of their paws, right? So hold up the paw and take a picture with your phone. Or if you're out walking, I just did this the other day with my um, lab shepherd rescue that we have. And she stepped into the grass and then she stepped the wet grass and then stepped onto the sidewalk. And I was like, oh, that's like the perfect paw print. So I snapped a picture with my phone. So that way you have it, you know, that way as well, too. So I love it. Great options. idea. There you go, <laughs> Kathy. Take, take it in the snow. We're, we're in South Florida and Southern California, so we can't appreciate this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put back up here because I got to do my job well and put this and we'll and we will put the blog and I think Deanna put the blog up there earlier. Um, you're very welcome, Elizabeth. And so you've done all these great blogs, Mandy. You're so talented as a photographer. Do you do photography still in Southern California by any chance? Yeah, I do. Uh huh. In Southern California. So I'm actually in the Inland Empire area, but um, I often go to Orange County and you know surrounding areas. Yeah. Okay, good. I I couldn't ask for a better photographer for for. Uh, thank you. I'm glad I got to meet Sarissa oh, yeah, in her does. Wonder Woman collar. So cute. She has a Wonder Woman collar on, guys. Like, yeah. Like, she was a Wonder Woman. She Ooh. was cute. Well, Mandy, thank you so much. I hope this was helpful for everybody out there. And and you know, it's a lot of a lot of great stuff is online if you just search for it. But it is important to to get the get the items before it's too late. Right. And and that's that's what's important. So, um, you know, and also think about special spots you might want to have taken. If you've got like a, a, a three toed animal and you want a certain paw, you know, to be to be shown. Right. Like or a, a certain pop to be taken because it's special. All of these little things. So um, listen, Mandy, it was awesome having you. I Thank hope you so much. I'm Thank sure you, you give everybody inspiration. And <laughs> Everybody go check out her Facebook lives. So what's your, is what's your Facebook page? Um, it's just at gray boy pet prints. Gray boy. For pet both, prints. both uh, Facebook and Instagram. So every okay. Friday at not this one, because I, I have to take a personal day um, to say goodbye mm -hmm. to somebody for a funeral. But um, normally on Fridays, at 2 p.m. I go on to uh, Facebook, that's California time. And yes. then um, I etch people's artwork work live for them there for like 20 minutes or so. And then I'll hop onto Instagram at 2.30 and then do that there as well for them. So it's fun, you know, and then I can answer questions and it's just fun to do. I love it. This is awesome. So thank you so much for all that you do for our, for our pets and the families that love them. Thank you. And thank you so much for helping my Jack. You oh, were so awesome. I love <laughs> it. No, oh, it was so nice helping you guys. Oh, you know, it's, it's, it might be, might be weird to some people for me to say it might be nice, but like he was in your lap. It was, it was yes. awesome. The best. Such a different best. experience than being yeah. in, you know, the veterinarian yeah. office. I just really liked, you know, being outside and kind of. Under the tree. It was perfect. Yeah. Hopefully he'll find Sam up there because I, I definitely miss her and and uh, but I'm sure she's got a lot of friends that I have angels oh, yeah. that I've created up there and she's yeah she's, she's in good wow. company and thank you everybody who's watching and yeah, please give you. your gray muzzle a kiss from me <laughs> take care until next time bye guys, bye, guys. Bye.